G'day guys, Toss20 here and welcome back to whatever this new series is called. You've guessed it, I am recording this episode before reading the comments of the last episode. So please keep on hitting me up with any name suggestions for the series and what this region is because I don't really know what we're going to be calling it. My suggestion is the Gold Coast because we are surrounded by a golden coastline but we'd also love to know what you guys think so keep hitting me up with any names. Uh, the name will be whatever this place is called, it's not just the city, we will also need a city name, but I would like to name this whole region, and what is it going to be called? If you're brand new to the series, or to the channel, welcome, we are building this map that I am taking lots of inspiration from open world games, and how they create these environments, these worlds, that represents a certain place, or a time, and I find them very inspiring. I always like the way that they have to try and condense all these ideas into one single map. It's kind of like this squished down version of whatever they're trying to represent and I just find it really interesting how they have to incorporate all those aspects into something that's usually quite a small area, at least compared to what they're trying to represent. And that is essentially what we're going to be doing in this series. This is going to be an island based off Australia and New Zealand. And today we're going to be doing a little bit of landscaping, figuring out where certain aspects sit and I'm going to be talking about those, uh, those areas of inspiration, those real life places that I really love and places that I've always wanted to go to. And the map just has to make sense, it has to flow, everything has to merge with one another, no wasted space. So far what I've been up to is I wanted to detail these mountains and start getting a bit of a feel for how I'm going to detail certain areas. Having a real go at this map theme that I'm using because it's a new one. And I kind of just wanted to set the tone for what sort of level of detail I'm going to be putting into the landscape around here. And I think that this is a pretty good base to start with. Um, and basically what I've done for this mountain is just went in with the brush tool and just made a couple of ridges, a little bit um, a bit more defined areas where water will be naturally running off this um, off this mountain. And then I've also gone in with the map theme and did this trick that I haven't really done before and it, it requires a fair amount of patience, but basically you have to make the brush size as big as you can and you turn down the strength just to like the lowest possible strength. And then I've used one of the resources to just color it a little bit of a brown color and then I've gone through and just made within the ridges a little bit greener. And the real trick with this is to just go super low strength because if you go too hard then it forms some very unnatural types of colors and it's very tricky because you just have to be very patient. You have to trust it and it takes a while but it's so worth it. I think that um, the after effect of it is is definitely worth it. And quite often I would go in and just go, okay, I'm just gonna wind up the strength just a little bit, a little bit more. And it just never works out. You just have to put it down to that 0.01 and you get that really nice effect. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of that in um, this episode. Uh, you can see that I'm doing it on this ridge over here. And basically these are the mountains that are going to be surrounding the main city. So the city is going to be sitting within this bay area and these mountains form this really nice opening to the city. So you're going to have this natural environment before kind of seeing what is going to be like a fairly dense city that's going to be sprawling all over this mountainside and around this bay. And in terms of inspiration, so the city has taken so many different shapes for this series like I originally wanted to do something like Sydney and then it was too tricky with the amounts of waterways that are around Sydney. Unfortunately to do something like that you need quite a lot of space and I just don't have that sort of space so we needed to find a city that was going to give me a bit of flexibility so I could do something similar to Sydney in some aspects but completely change the way that the city was going to kind of take shape. So I ended up taking inspiration from Wellington in New Zealand. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with Wellington, but this is a city that I haven't really explored too much of until starting the series. But now this is just one of those cities that I just so want to go to. It just looks so picturesque and I would love to explore all the mountain sides around here. Um, but in particular, I really loved these mountains that are just right on the water's edge. Something that we don't really have too much of in Australia. Uh, 
our landscape doesn't really do so much of this so this sort of aspect of these big mountains right up to the water's edge is very much inspired by New Zealand and Wellington in particular for this area so that was my inspiration I'm sure you could probably see some similarities to that but once again we are not going to be doing any sort of recreation a lot of the places that I'll be building are going to be inspired by certain areas but I am not going to be doing any sort of you know, we're going to rebuild this we're going to rebuild that that's not gonna happen and I think the reason why I don't want to do that is because it's always nice to create something that's unique and I um, always get bogged down if I have to do a recreation there's been places where I've recreated before and it gets a little bit tedious because you are just rebuilding something that already exists and there is a little bit of enjoyment in that but for this I really do love the aspects that it's going to be all unique and unfortunately that actually restricts me from using a lot of really fantastic assets on the workshop there are some really nice Australian assets like the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House there are some really nice looking assets on the workshop but you know the moment you place those buildings down you then just go okay that's Sydney and I don't I really don't want that so we're gonna have to be really particular with the types of buildings I use I have to try and find assets that you know you should like maybe of course you're gonna recognize some of them but hopefully within the context it's going to look pretty different but I was so bummed out I couldn't use those assets because the Harbour Bridge asset is just amazing like Bad Peanut has done a really fantastic job on that and unfortunately I just can't use it because it's just too iconic to us to Sydney and the moment you place it down it just feels like I don't know maybe it's because I'm Australian but and I'm from and I'm from Sydney but as soon as I place it down I just feel like it's a bad recreation of Sydney <laughs> so I can't really do that so unfortunately that's at, that's off limits but fortunately there are a bunch of other assets that I can combine together that should give a much un a little bit more uniqueness to um, a project like this a really important aspect of this project is to create some really nice vistas so I'm really thinking about the areas that you can point the camera to and look at and you might be able to see the skyline over the water and some mountains in the distance and then flip over the camera and you should be able to get you know a bit of the you know some sort of old, small town that's on the water side you know the idea behind this is so that lots of different aspects lots of different areas they should feel really nice there should be some really great cinematics and hopefully every angle you choose when you're down close or up high wherever you are you should be able to get some nice shots and some nice vantage points like that is the idea behind this and the um, reason why I'm doing that is because so many of my other projects I don't really think like that I kind of just dive in and build because I think that's a realistic place to place things but then I'm not really thinking about the fringes of the city or I'm not really thinking about what's right next to that area and you know there might be a border you might be able to see the edge of the map where you might you know have an area that's just I haven't really detailed or the landscapes a bit wonky and you know you usually just forget about those things but with this I really don't want that I wish it should be able to get some really nice areas and some nice views from pretty much anywhere you look at and that's your idea so you can actually see that really nice winding highway that stretches towards the city and man you're gonna get some really nice really nice shots of the city as you kind of wind in and get closer to the city or even when you're leaving the city should feel like you're going towards the coastline and places start to spread out a little bit smaller towns on the fringes that's yeah, gonna be super lovely now we're working out of the city and this is going to be probably one of the first towns I end up working on and I think it's going to be a fairly large town it's going to be an area that's inspired by some of the more alpine areas of Australia um, and in particular Tasmania is going to be the main source of inspiration particularly the forest that's going to be around here and the mountains uh, I would love this town that sits around here and I don't know if the town's going to be inspired by any Tassie towns I actually don't know the type of town I'm going to be building but I do know that I would kind of like that town to have a bit of a focus on logging and also tourism so it's gonna have this really weird contrast between people who are there to walk around the wilderness and to explore these mountains and to be immersed in this wildlife and then there's gonna be a whole bunch of like factories and buildings dedicated to tearing it all down and unfortunately that's kind of the case in a lot of places around Australia I mean I think we do a pretty good job at protecting a lot of um, natural wonders in Australia um, but I'm thinking there's some 
pretty amazing ancient forests in Tasmania that have just been completely smashed by loggers. Uh, there's a lot of unprotected space down there, which is really sad because it's just one of those places that's, you know, you log it and it's like, you're not going to get that back. It's These are ancient forests and I would like to represent that um, as sad as it is. These are really nice forests that um, surround these towns and you know, what it looks like around these places. So that's going to be the main focus for this town. So it's going to have this really nice beach that's going to be out the front. And I'm also working on this area that down here that I wanted to create kind of this like mangrovey swampy land, which um, I always am I'm a big fan of these swampy marshlands. And we've got a bunch of mangroves in Australia. So I think that this would be a nice, um, a nice spot for it. So this town's going to be a real mixed bag. It's going to be very much in the heart of nature and have this very big touristic scene. But there's going to be this side, this industrial side to it as well, which, you know, I'm, I am looking forward to putting into, but then also not looking forward to it because it's just this like terrible reality. Uh, but yeah, that'll be fun to start placing down. So this mangrove we're working on, my technique for it was to make this very flat, muddy plain area right next to the water, finding pretty much the the, the layer just before there's water and then that's my muddy plain that's going to be the base for the mangroves and then I've just carved in some waterways and to use move it to select some mangroves and then just place them over this water bit so that these this waterway just seems much more narrow than you can usually get within city skylines but um that's a bit of a placeholder I mean the mangrove looks pretty nice and I'm, I'm happy with how it looks but it's I'm um, really just and a lot of this is really just me placing the, these things down and going okay there's definitely gonna be mangroves here there's definitely gonna be a forest here there's definitely gonna be this mountain here and I map out the basis of what it's gonna look like and then the idea is then to go back and make it just a more detailed expand it out which is something I haven't really done so much of in my other series I usually you know map out very very bare bones of where I want things to go and then I just go in and try and see if I can make it work and the problem with that is that you have to then fit in you know really big infrastructure or really big landscape features like oceans or mountains and it's really difficult to do that in a realistic way and for it to not be a waste of space whereas this time around I'm able just to go in and go exactly know where things are going to go and then, you know, things should hopefully take shape in a more natural way. And like I said before, infrastructure, something I did work on that you didn't, like I didn't actually mention, but I, I did map out where I want the airport to go. And I did mention that in the last episode, but that's like, that's pretty set in stone. I know where I'm going to place at airports. And I do want to work on that very early on in this series because, yeah, I mean, Marble Mountain Airport, I mean... I'm going to talk about this later on, but I, I don't know if it's going to happen, guys, because I don't have no idea where I'm going to place it. Uh, but at least with this series, we're going to do it very early on and we're going to know exactly where it's going to go. Um, in terms of the foliage we're placing around here, so uh, I'm using so much Padelmo uh, trees because he does a lot of Australian forest and it's just so nice to be able to use a lot of his, um, a lot of his work. Um, and a lot of the foliage I've chosen around that area trees that you typically find in Tasmania so it's quite nice that area has very different foliage to the rest of this map I like that that forest is very unique and I don't plan to use that type of tree like those type of trees around like other areas and that's what I mean by making things very unique on this map you know wants you to be able to realize where that forest sits within this map and how that's different to other parts of the map now we're back towards the city. This is an area that I dare say is going to change a fair amount as we uh, start to map out the city. In fact, I reckon a lot of the area around the city is going to change when we start placing down buildings and roads and start figuring out where main parts are going to go. Uh, but this sort of area, I this is like a good example of how I'm making this or making these mountains fit within this landscape. And originally this mountain had a ridge that stretched all the way out towards this waterfront. And what I've done, because basically that was too large for the scale that we're going for. So what I've done is actually removed that ridge and I've placed another mountain hillside area that's going to be covered in foliage. And 
that's just like a good example of how things like how perspective and our scale play such a big part within this you know if i was just to leave that ridge there then that's actually a little bit of wasted space like this that that ridge is pretty unusable unless i was to have like a walking trail over there or do something like that um you know wind farms or you know some sprawling neighborhood but you know the way that that sort of sprawled out in that area made it so that i couldn't really use it like it wasn't really usable space but by flattening that out and creating my own mountain that's in a very similar spot we can now use this space in a, in a much better way so i'm thinking around here we could you know reduce the amount of foliage around here and even have like some better walking trails that can actually utilize that one mountain that small hill i guess you could call it um, i'm also going to put some farming around here just for the time being but i reckon there might be a neighborhood that goes in the ridge that's not the ridge sorry the valley that's around here um, but like i said it's going to change a fair bit because this is still sort of close to the downtown area so i dare say there's going to be you know this this hill that we have this mountain could potentially end up being like a like a national park not a national park a parkland uh where there could be some sort of historical building on there uh but just when it was that mountain that stretched out there was wasn't really a space that i could use and that's how i'm just using perspective and trying to figure out how things are going to sit within the map now we're starting to work on some very tricky transitions uh, and there's going to be a lot of these this type of planning and figuring out and these challenges that I'm going to encounter and we're going to, we're going to still encounter these challenges as we work on the map within the save game not just within map editor uh, and the tr tricky transition is where you have this desert dry biome and I'm going to try and mix it within these other areas so you've got this more alpine area that's down towards the left and we've got this coastline that's more temperate and then i also want this farm land that's going to be around here but uh, like there needs to be space like i want there to be space between it even though there's not a huge amount of space we need to make it feel like there's a fair amount of space so then how do i how do i do that like what what am i going to do that's going to make it work and there's two things that can make can, can provide that false perspective or can create this extra space that doesn't really exist um, one of them is mountains and hills like if I create mountains that does create a really nice barrier between places and it justifies why some of the highways might go in a different direction because I mean at the moment without that mountain or that hillside that I'm creating uh, that highway from the city can actually just go straight to the desert and I don't really want that of course it can but like that means there's no journey there's no way that there's no reason for it to go through farmland and hills and past dams and valleys and all that sort of stuff um, and it also justifies the reasons why like the temperature or the climate or the environment might change because quite often mountains will do that they will you know drastically change one biome to another and that's a really good reason why i'm exaggerating the size of these mountains you know that's why this whole map probably doesn't really best represent australia but then those individual areas probably do well, i reckon do represent australia and the type of landscape we have and we do have mountains but the ones that i am creating are, are way more exaggerated and I, that's just something that i have to do to try and uh, squeeze in as many different ideas onto this map as possible and then the other thing you can do to create this space this uh false perspective of this big open area is to use water and what i've done here is i'm creating this dam that's going to be in this little valley uh and i've also mapped out where i wanted the creeks and rivers to stretch out from here as well so you can see that i've actually used the fertile um, resource texture to paint like a path of where i want that river to go and the reason why i've done that is because i this time around and something i haven't done before is i would like this map to really represent what real life nature does and real life nature you know if you're gonna have a valley if you're gonna have all these mountains you're gonna have creeks and rivers and lakes that are going to carve that out at least in the majority of cases so what i wanted to do is make sure that there were like natural and real bodies of water that were carving out these mountains and these hillsides so it's really cool to see that uh you know that path that has been that the river's taken and where it leads to which is now the mangroves 
And so this water source, you know, it starts at the dam and it's going to start at this very small little creek. And it's going to slowly become larger and larger and it's going to carve this way down the valley where I'm going to have a really cool, really big canyon where I'd like to use some, you know, great rocks, some grey flame rocks that are just like waiting for me to create a canyon, which I'm so keen to do. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be nestled in the forest here and there's like so many great canyons in Australia that I could be taking inspiration from. Uh, one in particular is the Blue Mountains has a whole bunch of different, uh, these, these valleys, they're a bit more like valleys, but I'm going to be exaggerating these and turning them into, into this like canyon. And the highway actually stretches around here too. So it's really cool, you're going to go from the mangroves, this town that's down here, past these mountains, through this canyon, and then up into this farmland where this dam is. And I also want there to be a town around here too. That's going to be kind of like the break between this more farmland agriculture area near this dam. And then there's going to be then this town, which could be any sort of town. I haven't really thought about what the town's going to be like, but it's going to be out in the outback. And then we're going to transition to this desert. But this valley, like I'm really excited to work on this valley. We're just putting down the bare bones of this thing for the time being. Like it's a little bit ugly in places. Uh, the foliage has just been laid on top, but I'm really just, I can't wait to get in here and start detailing it. I think it's gonna be really fun. Um, and this is like a good example of me having to combine different aspects of Australia that I wanted to include. So I knew that I wanted to create this like more alpine type of area. We've valleys and canyons and big trees and forests so I kind of had to smoosh together the blue mountains for me which is you know source of inspiration something I wanted to create and then the mountains and the forests of Tasmania so I had to kind of smoosh them together to create the same type of thing even though they're so different and the landscape is so different I had to combine them so we're gonna be doing a fair bit of that combining different ideas um, because you can't have them all and you don't want them all because I don't you know I don't want multiple forests that look the same I want unique ones that all look very different uh, but as we detail the rest of this dam area up I do want to say a big thank you all for watching to the very end it's very much appreciated if you've enjoyed it hitting the like button subscribing to the channel they're all great ways to stay up to date with things that I upload and to show your support Next episode, we're going to be changing a little bit around here. There's a fair amount that I want to update and fix up and it's going to look pretty nice. I'm pretty excited for the next episode. Things really start to take shape. Um, and something that I haven't mentioned yet, I'm going to have to mention it in the very first part of the next episode, but this map will be available to you guys on the Steam Workshop as soon as I finish making it. So a couple of weeks, you'll be able to build whatever you like on this map. But that's something I'm going to have to talk more about next week. Before I head off, I do want to say a big thanks to the folks supporting me on Patreon. Dexter Bats, Kevin Thompson, Matthias Winkelhausen, Bess Brendan, Vivid Swing, Robert Murick, and Adam Evans. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!